Hey guys, Dan with Great Overland. We're here in a Link 148 all-wheel drive on a Ford Transit chassis. This is a C2 Sleep 2. Um, but I really wanted to talk about our electrical system and one thing in particular, that's the inverter. In our vans, they come with a Victron Multi Plus 2 3000 watt inverter with a surge capacity up to 5000 watts for a short uh, term surge in energy. Now, what I specifically wanted to talk about is something because a lot of people that are moving into this space are new to camper vans, new to moving energy from battery storage, which is in DC or direct current, to through an inverter to alternating current or AC, which is kind of like the outlets we have at home. Not kind of, just like the outlets we have at home. Um, and there's something that's new to that. So if I have a 3000 watt inverter, that means that the inverter can pull up to 3000 watts continuously through it. Now there's a couple things to think about with that. Which devices I'm gonna use, which devices I'm gonna try and use simultaneously, because there is some thought process that has to go into that. So this induction cooktop, this is a 1300 watt induction cooktop. Now that means that the typical amount of wattage that this is going to pull when I'm cooking on it is 1300 watts. That being said, I've seen this thing pull up to 1800 watts when you put it on sear. So it can pull up to 1800 watts. Now, if I'm trying to run a coffee maker that has a high pull at the same time, I may be maxing out at that 3000 watt space. So really you have to look into your devices and the ones you want to run simultaneously if you have two devices that pull a lot of energy at the same time, then you may be maxing out that thing. It may trip a breaker or cause your inverter to um, protect itself, shut itself off and then restart. And you'll just need to decrease the loads. Occasionally you're gonna have to take turns between devices. And that's just kind of a difference between a house and getting used to a camper van or a trailer with an, a DC powered energy system. There is another piece that I like to point out. If you have one of our vans or you have another company's camper van or you are working on doing a DIY build, this is important. When you're doing your math on your devices, they will show how many watts they pull, but they will always pull a little bit more than that. If I have a device that's pulling 100 watts, for example, it will show 100 watts on my screen where it's reporting my energy. However, when you invert energy from direct current from a battery through an inverter to your 110 outlets, you always have a little bit of energy that gets lost in there in that process. It's, a, it's not a perfect number, but it's around somewhere between 10 and 20%. We usually figure around like 12 to 15% in that range typically. That energy doesn't get reported anywhere. So what you should be aware of is if I have a device or two devices, each one is pulling 1500 watts, that actually will be over 3000 watts when you put them together if you were to run them at the same time. It may be more like 3300 watts. And now if you're seeing that happen in your van, you should be aware of that and you may need to take turns with those two particular devices. So just remember, if you do uh, rough numbers, you're going to be about 10% over of what the device actually says and or is being reported on your screen. So hope this helps you guys. Um, whether you're doing your own DIY van and you're trying to do math on what size inverter you need or you have one of our vans, um, just be aware that you may have to make a compromise here and there depending on devices or you may not need to at all if you get energy efficient devices. Hope this helps. If you have other questions, throw them in the comments. We're more than happy to point you in the right direction and make sure that uh, you're getting the most efficient use of energy out of your camper van.